it's that time of the month again where we're greeted with the monthly free marketplace assets. This month I feel is going to be a fairly short video. We've been gifted with a very themed month. We can see there's a kind of animal theme going on here. So from left to right we have the Animalia German Shepherd, which is an animated model set for the German Shepherd. The animated pond fish, I would call that a fish pond. We've got the farm animal signs, and some of you may have got access to the animal farm signs. There seems to have been a little bit of an error where the other asset pack was uploaded for free for a short period. I wasn't aware of that. I now have two farm animal packs, which is probably going to work out to be two more farm animal packs than I will ever use. And then we've got the low poly cats and the modular house. As previously, I've downloaded most of these apart from the modular kit. But we'll have a quick look at all of these and I'm going to go through some of the blueprints and the, uh, the assets in a project very shortly. So just to go back in order, a little bit more detail, the German Shepherd is a kit which is like I said an animated male German Shepherd. It does also support GIFA, which for some people will be very, very useful. We'll then be looking at the animated pond fish. This uses the fish of the asset to simulate a pond in a video game. These fishes are made with a kind of cartoony style. They do provide and show support for how to swap out your own fish if you wanted to implement this type of thing. So this can be very useful. This is going to be the one that I'm most interested in. It does have some kind of uh, learning value to this for other people. We then have the farm animal signs and the animal farm signs if you were lucky enough to get that one early too. The farm animal signs, the one which you should be getting free for the month, has 410 original high quality domestic animal signs. Moving on to the low poly cats, as the name would suggest, this is a pack of low poly cats. has one texture and 80 IPRM animations. And finally, we have the Modular House, which is a modular house pack designed to create houses with endless variations. So all of these can be found now on the Epic Launcher or the Marketplace website. If you wanted to add these to your cart, download them now and you get access to those on your account free forever. With all of that said, though, let's jump over to the engine. I've got my project ready to go and we'll look at some of the main assets and have a look uh, a little bit more in depth of what's on offer and what people may be able to take from these if you're not sure if you need to download and install these. So starting with the Animalia, the German Shepherd here, we have a very nice overview map where we have the dog in the background ready to animate. That alone is a great selling point. You can of course never go wrong with that many dogs all in one place and one of my favorite things here is we can see some of these dogs aren't just walking on the spot by themselves they're walking together we've got these nice friendly dogs looking at each other we then have another set of nice friendly dogs kind of paying attention to each other one not quite so interested we have some dogs running with each other which uh, again always nice to see we have uh, some tired dogs in the background there as well and then my favourites, these dogs, very, very suspicious dogs, prowling along with each other. Now we do have some extra assets here as well for the different types of fur. And if we move this around, oh, we have a German Shepherd wall mount. So if you wanted half a German Shepherd, this is going to be the asset for you. This one doesn't have the teeth and eyes, so do keep that in mind. And then if we go over to the fur base, we have uh, some kind of monstrosity, which is just the teeth and eyes, a tongue and some claws. So that's the German Shepherd, not a whole lot to say there. It's, as you expect, it has the high quality textures, the materials and everything already set up, the animations are all very nicely in place, and a G for example as well. Moving on to the low poly cat, very similar, we have an overview scene here. Again, pretty much just a bunch of cats all moving around, jumping, walking in some strange ways, looking and playing with each other, uh, and it shows off the single texture being used on a uh, variety of different cats as well. I always like to see animals interacting with each other, so I found these two here. I thought this was walking to begin with, but this is actually a swimming animation, which uh, makes a lot more sense. Personally, not a huge cat person, definitely more of a dog person. So again, not a whole lot to say. This is just a very kind of art-based asset pack. As you'd expect, it has the materials, meshes, and everything set up kind of as you would think, along with the textures here. One thing that caught my eye, this is definitely created by a Unity developer, I'd guess, as we have a maps folder called scenes, something I find quite interesting. 
And on to the last asset here, the showstopper of the month I would say is the animated pondfish, a name that I'll never quite get over. This one I think if I ever need to do any kind of talking videos where I don't have any of my own footage ready to go, this is actually I think quite a nice looking package and there's a good chance I'll just throw this on full screen as I have here with this running in the background. It's got some nice water in the project. The fish are looking very calming and pleasing. This, I think, is a really good asset. Visually, it's very striking. And I'll be going into some of the code in just a moment as well. And we can see some of the blueprints. So like I said, this is a really nice one. And one of the things that really excites me about the monthly content are the possibilities provided to the community for free for you to get access to all of these varied and kind of interesting projects and pick apart some of the blueprint logic within these projects. So this one's quite interesting straight from the uh, get-go here we can see we've got the water so if you ever needed a kind of rippling water material see that's ready in the package that's fully accessible ready to go likewise we've got the movement of the fish the detection the way they're set up the tutorial on the marketplace page as well like I've mentioned there is a link to show how to replace the fish with your own so all of that's set up ready to go in the blueprints and you can use your own custom assets if you wanted now one thing I will say, there's a lot of praise as I've just uh, went through there to be given to this project. I just wanted to also keep in mind that I aim these videos at kind of assuming that new people to the engine might be watching this, potentially slightly less experienced developers, and whilst this does make a very good learning example, there are some things which are worth noting. For example, everything in the project for some reason is a blueprint. So the bridge, the water, everything has been converted from a static mesh to a blueprint. And all of the tick events have been left running, which means if you do something like this, the water is constantly updating itself, constantly ticking. You've got all of these actors in the world. Um, and I'm showing a demo here in the background with just the water and the bridge. That alone, you've got hundreds of ticks per second, which are running away in the background for no real good reason. So what I would say, if you are gonna do this, I personally wouldn't turn a bunch of static meshes into blueprints anyway, but if you did, definitely come in, go to the class defaults, which I'll show you in just a moment. And when you're in the class defaults, you can see the start with default tick enabled, tick that to false, and that way at the very least, your assets aren't bulking out on the tick event in the background when they're really not doing anything. These aren't being updated, they're not communicating with each other, uh, they're not checking for collisions or anything, they are essentially just static meshes with extra performance overhead. So like I said, it doesn't take away from the asset being very, very good. We're going to look into some of the blueprints for the, the fish and things in a moment. It doesn't take away from the, the benefit of that. Just something I wanted to mention that I did notice. And if you are watching this and you're going to be using this in your project and you'd maybe just be taking these directly from the asset and plugging it into your project, look out for the blueprints and maybe toggle the uh, event tick. So over to the water material, uh, again, very well commented, um, most of it. We've got, uh, like I said, a very nice kind of water material going on here. Very flexible, a lot of properties which are exposed as parameters, which is interesting that that wasn't then created as a material instance, so those parameters aren't very easily usable. So definitely make that a material instance on top of the base material. Then we've got one comment here, which is just telling us it's a comment, which is very true. Um, but besides that, all of this, again, uh, you can see what every part of this is responsible for. If you wanted to make that a material instance, it's going to make this a lot easier then to update things on the fly or to test different styles of, uh, of water in your project. And then finally, of course, the most important thing for this project, I would say, is going to be the fish. So having a look at the fish classes here, this is one of the things that first stuck out to me, that we have fish classes. None of these note that they're a base class. So I was kind of expecting all of the logic to be housed and kind of copy and pasted across the different classes, which I was going to be a little bit disappointed with, to be honest. Um, but then if we look over here, we can see that this is an actor class. All of the other fish are also actor classes, and none of them have any code in their class body, which then led me to look over here, and we can see that we have the BP underscore fish movement. So they've created a custom fish movement component, which I think is amazing. It's kind of like a character movement component, but for fish. This makes this very modular and very kind of easy reusable which is an ideal way to consider working with your project so again this is a really good thing to look at a really good thing to break apart look at how the developer has created this movement component all of these properties have been exposed so it's very very easy to customize each individual fish to move in different ways and react in different ways and again the movement class when we can find it we'll get back to that in a moment is documented and commented very very well so this was quite interesting the naming regulations on the marketplace and i know this because i have an asset on the 
marketplace are quite strict usually about how you name your folders. So blueprints go into the blueprints folder, components also go into the blueprints folder, potentially in a components folder housed within that if you wanted to, but they're still blueprints. So this left me searching for a little while trying to find where this fish movement component was until I noticed the scripts folder just here. So again, I'm guessing this is somebody who's maybe familiar at some point with Unity and has placed the components inside of a scripts folder. And that is uh, kind of fine. Not too bitter here. Just had a few of my submissions come back with very particular updates needing to be addressed. But yeah, uh, we can find the fish movement component inside of the scripts folder. And again, if you wanted to jump in here, like I said, highly recommended. Look through this, look through all of the comments and see what the code is doing, how these are all kind of communicating and working with each other. And again, just getting that idea of reusable modular class component based logic here. So joking aside, besides the, uh, the folder being named scripts and that being okayed by the QA on the, uh, the marketplace submission, I definitely hope I get that person in the future. This is a very, very well written bit of code here. And again, if you're not familiar with kind of working in a component based architecture, working with components as these modular plugin bits that you can just add to any class, then this is going to be a nice starting point. The character movement component in C++ is very similar in what it does and how it operates. But of course, that is going to be a lot more kind of involved and take a lot more programming knowledge and kind of experience to get going. So this is a nice light version of that to get into if you're interested in potentially working that kind of uh, process into your project. And finally, I haven't forgotten the farm noise. There isn't a whole lot that I can really show here. I tend not to play signs through my project uh, or whilst I'm recording that can get a little bit confusing but you may have noticed this video is slightly more noisy than usual and that is because I have the ambience and some of the animals chirping in every now and again from the farm animal asset pack just in case you wanted to get an idea of the kind of uh, sounds and quality of those sounds that you'll be getting in the pack which is now currently available so just to confirm this is coming from the farm animal pack not the animal farm pack so this is the one with 400 plus sound effects that you can hear in the background i've not played them all but like i've said these are some of the ambient the ones which will be less distracting and i've thrown a few nice animal noises in just so you can get an idea of what you can expect from the pack so overall a interesting month uh, there's like i said i'm always very excited about the learning potential that people can get from these packs i'd say on that basis there's kind of one pack that i really enjoyed which is obviously the pond fish but for people looking to just implement some animal assets into their project, maybe you're making a new version of Animal Crossing or some kind of cat petting simulator, then I think you're pretty good with the assets that you're getting in this monthly pack. And those 400 plus sounds for the animals are going to go pretty well with any of these projects. Uh, so like I said at the beginning, this seems like it's been very considered and definitely themed, if nothing else. So I'll leave that video here. If you've enjoyed the video or found it useful, please do leave a like and share the video around. That really helps the channel and for the content to reach as many people as possible with some hopefully helpful and insightful content. Be sure, of course, to subscribe to the channel to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. And I just wanted to say a big thank you, as always, to everybody who is supporting me over on the Patreon. The constant support there is greatly appreciated and really allows me to spend as much time as possible creating the weekly video content and every now and again random things like this as a kind of extra piece of content for the channel and hopefully for you to enjoy. So a big thank you again for all of your support there. As ever though, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.